In this video, I'm going to show you how you can update your privacy policy. Okay, so the privacy policy is a really important page on your website, and it's really important that um, websites have privacy policy because it pretty much states how you will um, and will not use their um, information and how you um, protect their privacy. So if you go through the privacy policy and where you can find it, is uh, in the pages section. So it's a page on your website. And you'll notice that the template that you've been given, um, you've got templates for privacy policy and terms of use, but we'll do terms of use um, in, in the next video. So here you go. If you want to edit it, go into edit with Divi, click on that, or you can just uh, view it and then you'll be able to see what it looks like on the front end. Okay, so this is what it looks like with that horrible blue color up the top. <laughs> um, and here, I do encourage you to read through the privacy policy and to confirm that um, all of it is true and y you agree with all of it as well. And some of these, uh, uh, some of the parts in it may not apply to you. So do go through, see which, what works for you, what doesn't work for you and um, remove the things that aren't relevant. For example, if you do not have um, online courses or subscriptions, then you can delete this section here. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Um, so it goes through email marketing, um, tells, tells your audience how you'll use their email. Um, you know, what happens when, you, when they leave comments on your site. For example, if you do blog posts, and they, you know, write a comment in the comment section, what happens there? Um, media, contact forms, what, um, you know, where those go to, etc. Cookies, you may not have cookies set up on your website at the moment. Um, and what cookies are, it basically when someone comes to your website from, um, from like Google or Facebook, it, it tracks them not any personal information, but it basically just tracks the, the computer. And later on, if you decide to do Facebook ads or Google ads, you can actually target those ads instead of it being really um, uh, like, I wanna send this ad to all women who are over 40 who um, like this particular page, which is a lot of people. You can actually get so targeted that you can say, I want to send this ad to all of the people who have gone to my website. Okay. Um, which is really, really, really good. And it's all in the, in the long run, save you a lot of money because at least you know that the people that you are spending money um, with ads are people who are actually interested in your business or in your website. So that's talking a bit about cookies there. It's good to have it. Um, even though you don't may not have cookies set up now because we highly recommend that you do it in the future or it's there if you so happen to d choose to d you know do it in the future um, and feel free to just continue to read um, all that information down here it's pretty much just covering your bum <laughs> okay um, and there we go. There will be some things that you need to um, update here and I'll show you how to do that as well. Now the template that you've been given um, is a little bit hard to edit. And I'm not gonna show you, um, like I tell you why it's a bit hard to edit. It's been given in one big long text file and um, it's, they've, Basically, it's really hard to edit because it's in one big text file um, and the the headings have been coded, hard coded in. So um, what I've done is I've actually made a easier to, um, I've made a um, version of it that's much easier to edit, okay? So each of these little sections here are different text modules. Okay, so I'm going to show you actually how I did that and how um, what I did was I downloaded, I exported the page that I had created and then what you can do is you can import the new page. So here we go, I'm going to go enable visual builder 
And you can do this. Um, this is actually what um, Divi theme templates are made out of. You might see, um, let me go load from library. See, there's a whole bunch of pre-made layouts. All these are templates that have that Divi have made um, that you that they have just exported and you can import them. OK, so they've basically designed the page, put in whatever text they want to put in, you know, just designed it the way that they wanted to design it. And then they have just exported it into a file, a JSON file. It doesn't don't need to know what a JSON file is, but it got exported into a JSON file. And now if you want, if you like that um, layout, for example, this one here or that one there, whichever one you want, you can just import it. And it's just going to import all of the text, all of the sections, rows, modules, um, display. It's going to be exactly the same. It's also going to import all the media into your um, media library, into your media folder. Okay. But we're not going to be doing this. I might show you what that looks like in a later lesson. But right now I'm going to show you how you can export one of your own pages and then import one of your uh, that, that file. Okay, so here I have created a template for a privacy policy that probably looks exactly the same as the one you've gotten. But this one, instead of it being one big long text file that's really hard to edit, I have broken them up into smaller text files like you see. So for every little section, we've created a new one, which is going to make it much easier for you to um, edit and style if you if you want to do that. If you don't, I mean, really, it's a privacy policy. All that matters is the text is there. It doesn't need to be styled nicely, but why not style it if you can? <laughs> so here, I'm going to show you how I am have exported this page. So I've created this page. I want to export it. I click on this button here, portability, and I go export. I call it whatever I want. I'm going to call it privacy policy, and then I'm going to click export Divi build, build a layout. There we go. And I'm just going to save it here. I actually just saved this one before, so I'm not going to do that because I just did it earlier. There we go. So here we go. Say I delete all of these sections. Look, I'm just deleting it just like this because I don't want that footer because I've already got one here. I can even, no, I can't delete that one. Anyway, it's all right. So now I've just got this blank page as my privacy policy. But I have that template that I exported earlier. So now if I want to import it back in here, I'm going to click on this button again. I'll click import and then uh, I choose replace existing content. Yep. So it's going to replace this empty one here. I could actually keep all of that, keep all of the sections that I had before. And if I have this ticked, it's going to replace all of that content. So I don't need to delete it. But here we go. I'm going to choose this file. And I'm going to, I've created a folder called JSON files. I could call it like templates or whatever I want. I'm going to click privacy policy and look, there's a whole bunch of gobbledygook right here that you can't understand. <laughs> well, I can't understand it anyway. And then I'm going to click open. And then I'll click import Divi builder layout. And it should import. Here we go. Our privacy policy. And here we go. It's exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is along with this lesson, I'm going to be sharing with you those JSON files so that you can save that JSON file to your computer somewhere. It could just be on your downloads folder and you can upload that via the import. OK, so you'll just do exactly what I did. So now with privacy policy, here we are. Let's get into the designing the fun part. So I'm going to click this settings cog here and we're going to edit the background. OK, so this ugly blue background, we want to edit it. You can see that it's covering the whole length 
the whole width of the page. So that does mean that it's um, the background of the section. So let's go into section settings, background, and here you can see that it's the gradient. So what am I going to do? Am I going to make it an image or should I make it a, um, a gradient? Let's, you know, I'm going to actually go to unsplash because why not make the privacy policy pretty even though we don't have to. <laughs> Can't have too many pictures of motorbikes. Maybe I'll just go motorbike. Motorbike privacy? I wonder if that's a thing. Private. No, no, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay, I do want to have landscape. So I'll click that little filter for landscape. And oh, I just really like this one. I think that should definitely be on our privacy policy. Uh, download. Yep, so now that has downloaded, I'm going to call it motorbike, actually, privacy policy cover motorbike cover image. There we go. Um, save. Now let's tiny PNG it because that's always good practice. Do, 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 do. Waiting, waiting, waiting. There we go. Download, download, and save file. And we save it in the same spot. And I want to replace that old one. So let's go back to our privacy policy. I will, oh, I'm going to click this button. Go to the background. So we're in background. I want to change the background image or add background image. So it's this tab, add background image and upload files. Select files, I'll grab that one, upload. Now what's the uh, alt text going to be? Uh, I'll call it retro motor bike. Uh, what do you call it? It's a cafe racer on dirt road in the bush there it's pretty specific right there now here we go oh that's so good i love that bike okay now i want to put a background gradient on top of it not that blue one um to I'll move my face to to make the gradient go on top of the image you click this button down here, place gradient above background image, and then that horrible blue is going to come back. So now I'm going to change the color to what I want, this one, and maybe that one, and then I'll take the transparency down so now we can see it. There we go. Yeah, I can also, you know, make that, that color and the same color, but maybe uh, a different, a different opacity, if you know what I mean. So maybe up there and then I can change the gradient direction. Maybe that. There we go. So now I've got a cool motorbike with the gradient and it's got my um, colors, my um, branding colors. Okay. So next, who we are. So first of all, before I start styling all these things, there are some, um, some things that we need to add in to make it 
personalised. Um, for example, this our website address is. So we want to insert our URL here. So what we do is we click on the settings cog and our, the text is going to pop up here in the text box. So now we just want to insert the URL, which is https www.motorbikehero.com. Keeping in mind that this is a completely made up website that doesn't exist. Um, so what, am I, what I'm doing now is I'm adding a link, an internal link. So this is actually the website that we're currently on. Um, but it's really good practice to, whenever you have a URL, to link to it, all right? Um, otherwise, just a URL doesn't go anywhere. If someone wants to use it, they've got to copy it and then paste it into their browser. Um, and then, yeah, you don't want to make life harder for anyone. You want to make people's life easier. So that is why we will put the link in here. So all they need to do is click on it. So what you do is you select it, select, uh, click on this little insert edit link uh, button up here. And then we want to copy and paste the exact same URL. So that's going to go there. Title, you can put a title in it if you want. So I'm going to say murder bike hero website. And the target is going to be none. If it's an internal link, it's going to your website. You're not going out away to another website. Set it as none. If you are going away from your website to a completely different one, definitely go new window. Okay. And there we go. So now our website <coughs> address is this. So that one is done. Let's keep going down. <coughs> I'm just going to double check here. Look, see here, um, the Gravitas Service Privacy Policy is available here. You don't have to do this, but this, see, this is, I'm going to show you an example of, um, you know, what I was talking about. So here we've got a, a URL, but it's not going anywhere. So now I'm going to select it, click this insert edit link. <coughs> so I'm now going to copy and paste this. I'm going to call it automatic privacy policy and then I'm going to go target new window because it's not our website it's a totally different website um, so we're going away from our website because it's external so we go new window there we go so now it's a clickable link right there let's keep going down Here we go. Here's another one. So you can see here in the brackets, insert your non-personal email address. So your business email address. So here we're going to go they at motorbikehero.com. Yours will be either your name or hello at your website.com, whatever, you, um, whatever you decided it to be. So now what we're going to do here, because this is also a link, your email, we can link it so that it opens up an email, um, email service provider. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this, click this link, and we're going to copy that link and click and then type here and URL mail to dot dot colon um, zay at motorbikehero.com. And then here we're going to go motor, bike, hero, whoop, email. And target, because it's, um, while this is, um, it is motorbikehero.com, it is not going to your website. It's actually an email address. So if it's an email address, always click new window. Okay. And there we have it. So here we have another one, insert your non-personal business email. Let's uh, cheat a little bit and see if we can just select this one in here while we are in this text settings and maybe it's going to copy the link as well. So I'm going to copy that, so Command C, tick, and I'm going to go into this one, 
settings and see if it works. Yep, it does. It works. It's a nice shortcut. Okay, so we here we go, disclosure. You can see that there's this big statement. You will eventually need a terms of service page, ask a coordinator for access to a template, blah, blah, blah. You already do have a terms of use page. That is part of your template. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this little module settings. We're gonna delete that chunk of text, which we don't need. Now here, we're gonna do something very similar. Um, we're going to, first of all, I need the link to the terms of, of service, terms of use page. So here, um, I've got it open already. And here is the link. Actually, you know, this is supposed to be motorbikehero.com, but to be honest, I did not buy the domain name, so I don't own it. This is just a test site. But just assume or just pretend, sorry, that I've made www.motorbikehero.com um, and then terms of use is on the end of it. So here you, you could copy and paste that URL, but for now we're going to go just select terms of service, click on insert edit link, because it doesn't have to be a URL that links, that you can put a link to. You can put a link to any words, any amount of words that you want. Um, and it's also good for SEO to like use words to like link to if it's relevant. Um, so here, I'm gonna select this one here, but I'm also going to put a, um, a slash terms of use. Okay. And um, because that is what the, the URL of the page, um, title terms of service, and target none because it is within our website. Okay, there we go, terms of service. Now let's keep going. Is there anything else? Insert your business name. So here we gotta edit this one. We could even uh, add a link to this one. We may use web analysis tools that are built into the Motorbike Hero website, blah, blah, blah. So Motorbike Hero website, because we're basically saying the Motorbike Hero website, we can link it to the Motorbike Hero website because it makes sense and it's relevant. So this is a really smart thing to do. It's a SEO, um, good for SEO um, to do stuff like this, not to overdo it, you don't want to overdo, um, you know, internal links, but it's good to have, it's good to have them. Okay. And here we go. Insert your non-personal email address. So let's do that again. Say at um, motorbikehero.com. Select that copy that, paste that in there. Actually, don't forget the mail to, mail to. Oh, spelled that wrong. That would not work if I kept that. Title, motor, bike, hero, email. And we'll go new window because it's an email. Okay, there we go. I'll put a full stop at the end. So now all of that um, editing has been done to the text. Okay, so what we can do now is if you want to, you don't have to, but if you want to, you can edit these headings, make them look a little bit different. Um, I'll just kind of show you how you can do that. And then I'll give you a shortcut so that it can, um, you can edit all of them instead of having to do every single heading. Okay, so this here is a heading three. And how many heading threes do we have on this page? It might be this one as well. Let's have a look here. Yeah, we've got another heading three. And what's this one here? It's a heading two. And this privacy policy most likely is a heading one. Okay. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this heading 
2 up there because I think it makes more sense to have a heading 2 above all the heading 3s. So let's um, edit this one first. So heading 2. Let's go into the design tab. Heading text. Heading 2. So now here are all the settings that we can change. Default. So I believe that is um, not Poppins, it's Railway. Maybe I can do the ultra bold. Maybe I can go all capitals, do that one, and maybe align it in the center because that is part of our style. I want to do this one as well, actually, privacy policy. And I also, heading one, want this, so heading text, heading one, to be default. I want it to be ultra bold, capitals, italics. There we go. So now this is more aligned with our styling. Very cool. So who we are. Who we are. So this is a heading three. Okay, heading text, um, heading text, heading three. Maybe I can make it this color. Um, maybe I can also make it ultra bold, capitals, and italics. Yep. Yep. I could do that. So. Um, I could I could probably do some other things to it, but to be honest, I don't really think I need to. Um, I would like to have a little bit more spacing down below. So maybe I'll go to spacing and padding. I'll put some padding down the bottom just to give me some space um, underneath here so it's not as cramped. Let's go 20 pixels. There we go. And... Maybe we could create a border. I don't know, maybe a, a border on the bottom. Maybe a red border. I could do something like that. Hmm. Doesn't look too bad. Border style. Groove. Nah. Solid. Could do a box shadow. Nah, I don't like that. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of things that you can do. Um, transform, maybe animation, fade, slide, mm, zoom, flip. So, you know, we're getting into some more advanced stuff here. Um, I'm not going to do any of that, um, although it's, you know, kind of cool, but I don't think it needs all that fancy stuff. Now, let's have a look here. Maybe I'll go back. Maybe I'll go top and bottom. You know, 25 on the top and 25 on the bottom. Okay, now I have got my styling. I think I'm happy with that. Now, what we can do is I can um, copy and paste that styling to all the different modules here. So I don't have to do all those settings because I did quite a few, you know, style settings there. But I don't want to have to do them for every single one. So I'm going to show you how we can copy them. So here I've just, um, you know, selected this module. If I click on these three dots here, I can go copy module styles. And then I click on the one below and I can click the three dots again and go paste module styles. And now it's just pasted exactly the same styles. How cool is that? Paste module styles. Nice. And you know, if you want to, you can go and paste all of those, uh, all of those throughout the rest of the row. But I have an even faster way of doing this. And I like fast because I'm a bit lazy. <laughs> um, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so here, we have the right styles here for this one, but I want to um, extend those styles 
to every single text module in this row. Okay. I want to have those same stylings for all the rest of them in the row. So there's another shortcut here. If I click the three dots and it's called extend text styles, extend. So it's kind of like, I'm going to extend these styles to the rest of the, to the rest of them. So click on this button and it's saying here, extend this text styles to all texts throughout this page, this section, this row, or this column. Okay, so um, I want to extend all of the textiles to all of the text modules. For example, if I had an image module or a blog module, it is not going to extend these styles to those. It's only going to extend it to the text styles. Um, and all of these are textiles. So I'm going to just going to go this row because I know that they're all in the row, you know, the green one, they're all within all the modules are within that row. I could also say this section if I wanted because, but I, I might just choose this row and click extend. And then we cross our fingers and hope for the best. And let's have a look. And there we go. Very cool. It's just extended all of those styles throughout every single module uh, in this uh, text module in this one. Awesome. But look at this. It looks like it has also extended those styles to our main heading up here. Uh oh. So now, see, that's what extend does. It doesn't, we can't say, but exclude this one we said extend it to every text style throughout this, but you know, don't worry about that. We can, <laughs> it was much faster doing it for all of them. And now I'm going to go back and change those back to what we had before. So let's go ultra bold, uh, this one, this one and center it. And I'm going to get rid of that border, which we didn't have before. So, uh, click on the bottom border. See, you can put a border to each of the different sides here. I chose only bottom and I'm going to put it back to zero pixels so you can't see it. And there we go. I've just edited this privacy policy, except here I've got the old footer. So now that we've got this footer that attaches itself to every single page, I can delete this one here. There we go. Okay. And that's how you do it. Um, if you want, um, you know, if, if you want, you can do it, do this yourself. Um, I could also export this. Actually, I'm going to make you do it. I won't export this um, styles. So I encourage you to do your own styling and just try to do the copy and paste way of um, copying, pasting and styles and also using extend. This is the perfect place to test out the extend um, that, that feature that you can do. Okay, so always hit the save button when you're done. And in the next one, it's going to be quite similar to this. Um, we're going to be editing the terms of use page and we'll see you there.